Hello, my name is Matt Max. Today I want to talk about different microphone types. In the first part of this episode, I will talk about different microphone principles. And in the second part of this episode, I will talk about different implementations of those principles. So I will talk about dynamic microphones, condenser microphones, and piezo electrical microphones. Those are the three basic microphones types. Then I will talk about shotgun mics, level gear mics, tube mics, and headsets. So let's get started. The first type of microphones I want to talk about are dynamic microphones. If you see somebody on stage, live, they will most likely use a dynamic microphone. Uh, dynamic microphones are really robust. They are very resistant to moisture. And they have a very good gain before feedback that makes them really, really good for live performances. They work by induction. So you have a coil. The coil is attached to the membrane, and then you have a magnet. There's actually a magnet in here that you cannot see. This is a transformer, by the way. It's not a, <laughs> it's not a dynamic microphone coil, but the principle is the same. So you have this coil, and in the middle you have a magnet, and the coil moves, and when the coil moves around the magnet, it induces an electrical current, which is then your audio signal. So that is how it converts sound to electrical signals. The problem is that a magnet moving through a coil or a coil moving over a magnet cannot give you the same output signal for different frequencies. So it's not linear. If you buy a good microphone, it should come with a data sheet like this or it should come with a data sheet and there should be a graph like this. I already talked about this in the last episode, so I will make it short. So this is frequency and on a logarithmic scale and this is amplification of your microphone. And you see that the black one that is a dynamic microphone. It does not pick up all frequencies the same. It picks up frequencies here way louder than it does frequencies here. Okay. So for a studio, you usually do not want to use a dynamic microphone because a dynamic microphone is not linear and you do not get you do not get a perfect recording of the sound you want to record. Right. However, some voices actually sound better with a dynamic microphone. You have to find out which microphone suits your voice the best. On the other hand, you can, if you have a condenser microphone, which is the red line, that just picks your voice up perfectly, you can add all those mountains, you know, and valleys. You can add all of this in post-production anyway. So I don't see why you want to use a dynamic microphone in a studio environment. The next basic type of microphones that is used are condenser microphones. Condenser microphones have a very good linearity. The red line right here is a condenser mic. They are very linear. And that is what is used in the majority of vocal studios. That is what I use. That is what is used in professional sports commentators headsets. They all use condenser mics because they are very linear. They have low impedance and they need phantom power to operate. They aren't very robust, which is the reason why they aren't really used for live performances, right? You cannot shake them all over the place or, you know, drop them or have a lot of moisture, right? One of the reasons you have a pop filter with a condenser mic is that it it collects the moisture from your, from your, uh, from your voice, right? So yeah, they aren't very robust. So be careful while handling a condenser mic, but they are very good when it comes to linearity, right? They're extraordinarily, extraordinarily good when it comes to linearity. So condenser mics are probably your best bet. Piezoelectric microphones are surface microphones. You mount them to a surface and they pick up vibrations of that surface. For example, the pickups on an electrical guitar that are piezoelectric microphones. You can use them to record drums too. You cannot really use them to record voice. They have a high impedance. And that's basically it. You have probably already seen 
shotgun mics. Those are the mics that are mounted on top of cameras, those really long, slightly conical shaped microphones. Those are shotgun mics. Now, shotgun mics can be either condenser or dynamic because shotgun mic is of built form, okay? It has something to do with how the microphone is actually built. And usually you have a long tube and your microphone sits at the end of the tube. This is the front. And the idea is that this form, this tube, cancels out every sound except it enters from the front. So shotgun mics basically only record sounds that comes from the front, okay? Your microphone is like this. The distance from center to, to this is how much it picks up the signal. And this is direction, okay? So you see that a shotgun mic only picks up picks up sound from the direction you're pointed to. It does not pick up sound from the side. So that can be really good if you have if you have a noisy environment, let's say you have a big crowd to this direction, you're interviewing somebody and I pointed at the guy I interview, I will not pick up the crowd. It's good. But on the other hand I will amplify everything that is behind the guy I'm interviewing. <laughs> so if there's a street or or a rail line, you know, that would suck. So you have to think about how to use your shotgun mic. And usually you use it with a boom, so you have it over, just outside the shot, obviously, but over the guy you're actually recording. Uh, this way, you do not pick up any environmental noise at all. You still get good, uh, good quality sound and a good signal-to-noise ratio. The problem with shotgun mics is that they emphasize echo. If you have a small room, you shouldn't use shotgun mics, or you should soundproof your room, and I will talk about this in a later episode, so that you don't have echo in your room. If you have echo in your room, shotgun mics aren't for you, and they are worse the more directional they are, so the longer the tube is, the worse they get from an echo standpoint. Level Y mics is what you see in TV shows. Those are the small mics mounted to the clothing, right? You all, you all saw them. Those are called level Y mics. They are not as good as big mics. From a sound quality standpoint, they aren't as good as big mics. But they can be invisible. Right? They're very decent and they can be invisible if done right. You can, in, in theater, they are hidden in the hair. Right? Because in theater, you cannot mount it to the clothes because the people move and the, the clothes move on the skin and you would hear that, the microphone would pick that up. So you hide it in the hair and there you go. It will not pick up anything, you won't see it. Uh, Laval Game Mics actually also moved in movie moved in movies? Yes. They are also moved in movies. They are also used in movies whenever you cannot use a boom mic. Right? If you have a shot that is so wide angle that your boom, your shotgun mic has to be so far away that you would get a bad signal. You use the Laval Game Mic instead, so They are very special, okay? They are very special. You basically only use them in very, very special circumstances when you do not want to see the mic and when you can't hide, when you can't just use a boom mic for some reason. Tube mics are a special kind of condenser mic. They have a vacuum tube in them because condenser mics need amplification. You can amplify with a vacuum tube or with a transistor, right? Most modern condenser mics use transistors, but there are still people that like tubes because they sound slightly different. They sound warmer, right? I'm not a big fan of tubes. They are kind of bitchy. Am I allowed to say that? They, they bitch around a lot. They aren't very reliable. They aren't as linear as transistor condenser mics, they get really hot, so you have to mount the mic upside down so that the warm air rises away from the membrane. They are even less robust than normal condenser mics. And I don't see why you want to use a tube mic if you don't know what you're doing. And if you watch this tutorial, you don't know what you're doing. So if you watch this tutorial, you probably don't want to buy a tube mic, right? If you really want the special sound, right? And you already know how a tube mic sounds, then you are not watching this tutorial in the first place. Sheep headsets usually don't sound that good, but they're really good headsets. 
just just Google for commentator headsets. They are costly, obviously, but they are pretty good. They usually use condenser microphones, also pretty small condenser microphones. And the really good thing about headsets is that they are extremely good at canceling out environmental noise. That's the main reason why sports commentators use headsets in the first place. Sports commentators are not alone in a room, right? There is one room and there are like maybe six sports commentators in this room. And they don't want to pick up their neighbor, right? They only want to pick up their their own speech. So they use a headset this way and environmental noise won't be picked up at all. That's also the reason why it's used in esports commentary, because in esports commentary you usually have commentators and the crowd in one room. You don't want to pick up the crowd with the headset, you have special microphones to pick up the crowd usually. So that's one thing that's really good about headsets. The other thing is that you can move your head and it won't affect the sound. I cannot move my head because it will affect, accept, accept the sound. It will affect the sound, right? If I move my head around, it sounds differently. With headsets, no problem, right? The mic is always at the same position, always perfect distance from the mouse. So that's really good. If you get a headset, you should get a headset with circumoral earpads. Those are earpads that do not make contact with your ears. Instead, they make contact with your skull around your ears, right? That is really good. That's something to look out for because smaller earpads that actually put pressure onto your ears are very uncomfortable after, after a short while. So it's really big earpads. The circum oral earpads are way better for that. You can wear them for extended periods of time and you won't notice them at all. So that's something to look out for. But also, if you do not want the headset to be seen as at all, right? There are different headsets that actually don't have earpads at all. It's just a headset with a wire that like runs around your ear and then around your skull, and it's like the wire is like cutting into your skull slowly. That is so they actually hold, right? <laughs> They aren't very comfortable. You, you almost don't see them, right? That's a good thing, but they aren't very comfortable. But if you want to film yourself, if you want to use a headset, then maybe that's a good idea to get. Although, if you film yourself at home, why not just soundproof your room, get a shotgun mic, or get a condenser mic, and then use in your plugs? Right? Then you don't see the in-ear plugs and you can still talk and you don't have this wire cutting in your skull and slowly, you know, slowly cutting your flesh. I don't like them. Anyway, that concludes this episode. My name has been Mad Max. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.